the special one show Crash. There it is. Oh, look, look at the, at little the bow cuties. Bow. Um, the one show Crash. <laughs> the one show Crash is also a laboratory where we will be testing an online video that has had an amazing effect on toddlers worldwide, transforming the lives of their parents, apparently. It has. It's basically turned Balamori into a box set of Breaking Bad. <laughs> they are just sitting there, their little faces look, they're, they're already addicted. See? They're already addicted. You've fulfilled your comedian. You've done the tick. Uh, Quiet revolution taking place in the world of parents. Apparently so. Online videos of nursery rhymes are being used to regularly to distract toddlers so that busy parents have some peace and quiet, apparently. Yeah, but to say they are popular is an understatement. One 54-minute clip of back-to-back -back nursery rhymes has been viewed a whopping 483 million times. Here is Jasmine Harmon on how more and more busy parents are relying on YouTube. How can we say this kind of... Yeah, to, to keep them keep them entertained. Mm. Let mummy have it. As a busy mum to a very active 17-month-old daughter, Joy, I know just how difficult it can be to keep young children occupied whilst trying to get simple chores done. And today I'm heading to meet two fellow mums who each have very different views on how to deal with it. Hello. Natalie Hurd is a single parent to 16-month-old Ivy and heavily relies on screen time, often occupying her child with online videos. Where does the screen time fit into your day? Normally in the evenings when I'm preparing her meals. So do you think that the way you are a mum to Ivy is the same way as your mum was with you? I mean, they didn't have the, the toys, they didn't have the iPads, say. But um, I'd say, yeah, I'd say our parenting style was quite similar. Taking the opposite view is Louise Summers. She's never put her eight-month-old son, Jacob, in front of a screen for more than five minutes. My mum's a teacher. Um, she's always been involved with children. Um, and I've very much been influenced by how she's parented us. To find out which approach works best, we've decided to set up a little experiment. For one task only, they're going to switch parenting styles. Louise is going to try and clear up the kitchen whilst Jacob is entertained with nursery rhymes on a tablet. As for Natalie, she has to cook an entire meal whilst trying to keep Ivy entertained with active play. What could go wrong? Jacob looks pretty keen, actually. The minute he saw the tablet, he was trying to get to it, and now he's sitting there very happily, watching it intently. Louise's kitchen is sparkling in no time at all as Jacob remains mesmerised by the tablet. While for Ivy and Mum Natalie, it's all looking that little bit more stressful. Right, it's hard to know with toddlers when you change right, things. Okay, then. I think that you'll be okay. Then. How they're going to react. So is Louise surprised by Jacob's reaction? I'm quite surprised. Since we've turned the programme on, he's actually sat still for five to ten minutes and hasn't moved. It's not his normal behaviour. Back with Natalie, there's been no improvement and there's no dinner. Hello. Hello. How are we going now? <laughs> um, not so great. I didn't realise how much actually Ivy does like to watch the TV when I'm doing my dinners. It's quite surprising really because you don't you don't quite realise the impact it's having on your child. All right, come on then. It's clear the tablet helps to provide a much needed lifeline for busy parents, but I'm keen to find out what effect it's having on the kids. I think a good way to use a screen is always to be very much alongside your child talking about it, interpreting what's going on, asking them what they're thinking about it, maybe even stopping and starting it so that you can have a conversation. Because there's something about you, know, you being there with your child that will enhance the whole experience of, of looking at a screen, which can, can really only do one thing, which is you sit there and I will watch. With the exercise complete, how do our mums feel? I think the biggest thing for me is actually Personally, I'm not interacting with him right. as much as I normally would. I've got to yeah. say, I am shocked. I didn't, I didn't think it would be so cutthroat as that. I thought she might be quite happy for a little while. I didn't realise as soon as I walked out of the room she'd get like that. Well, Jasmine is in the one show Crash slash Laboratory now. <laughs> uh, Jasmine, we love what you've done with that room for one day only. <laughs> yes, I know. Worked wonders in here, a bit of soft play. It's all good fun. I think I might stay after you? the kids have gone. 
And we haven't seen you, Jasmine, since you had your little one. No, she's 17 months old now. Oh, so stew. She, I'm hoping she's in bed by now. Now, uh, are you actually showing them the video, you know, uh, currently, or are they mesmerised by the two people on screen? No, they're not interested in us at all. They're waiting with bated breath for their video. So, as you can see, I've got six youngsters here. I'll introduce you to them all. So, at the far end, we've got Charlie. He's seven months old. Quite a calm baby, according to his parents, but with quite a short attention span. Next here, we've got Rose. She's five and a half months old, and she's been to baby cinema before, so she is an old hand at this. We've got Marnie here. She's 18 months old. She loves Mr. Tumble, and she can watch for a long time, so you never know. Let's watch this space. We've got Dita. She's five months old, and she's never watched a YouTube video before. Next up, Cruz, who's seven months old. Now, his mum vowed... She'd never use TV or YouTube to distract Cruz, but she does. <laughs> we've all fallen for that one. And last but not least, we've got little Logan, who's 11 months old. He thinks... She, she, Mum thinks that he might last about 30 minutes. So the experiment that we're going to do is show all these children a video which you saw there in our little film. It's from a YouTube channel called Little Baby Bum. The video itself is called The Wheels on the Bus, plus lots more nursery rhymes. And it was released in 2014. Now, you saw there Louise had plenty of time to tidy up her kitchen while her baby was distracted. It's 54 minutes long, this video. Back-to-back -back nursery rhymes. And some people say that's the key to its success. So let's see if any of these children can go the distance. Are you ready, parents? So... Let's get everyone in place and all together then we'll press play. So hold it there. Are you ready there, Charlie's daddy? Nearly ready? OK. Everyone go, press play. This is the greatest piece of science that has ever <laughs> taken place on the BBC. <laughs> How cute is this? They are really good. They'll be shattered by the end. Oh, they love it. We'll see how it goes. Um, now, now, obviously, you're the... I... OK, uh, let's now go back to our very scientific one-show crash. <laughs> <laughs> we are testing a 54-minute video that has been keeping toddlers transfixed, apparently. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine, how are we doing? Please tell us this isn't the only kid left. <laughs> We've only got one left. As you can see, Rose is the only one who's stuck it out for more than 15 minutes. Dita was the last one to leave. She lasted about 16 minutes and her mum was enjoying having a little read of a magazine there for a few minutes. But basically, that's all the time you've got. You've got about 15 minutes, as these children have shown. But why do we think that Rose has, is still here intrigued by this video? I think, obviously, good graphics, good sound. So... Yeah, she's enjoying it. She has been to the baby cinema before, so... What's she seen? Um, she saw the theory of everything. And that doesn't sound like baby cinema. No, it's, for, it's uh, adult entertainment, or polite adult entertainment. Um, yeah, not that kind of adult entertainment. And, uh, yeah, so basically you can take your baby along, they leave the lights on, everyone takes their baby, so it doesn't matter if they scream or they need a nappy change. Is, what's um, she doing? Is she great. singing along or is, is she losing interest? I think, well, given the time of, of the day, quite tough and so she's probably losing a little bit of interest. Mm. I'm not sure I'd uh, sit her in there for a long period of time, but it's quite handy to know if you had urgent business you needed to get to that you could uh, put her in front of an iPad and it'd keep her entertained for a short time. And what's the next movie you're going to see with her? Uh, well, I did want to see... I did look at the next week and it was Fifty Shades of Grey, but I thought that was a little bit <laughs> inappropriate for a baby, so um, we'll have to see what comes on after that. OK, well, thank you very much and well done, Rose. You've gone the distance out of all the children here. Now, interestingly, a study that was released today has revealed that the average child spends less than five hours per week playing outside. And that's less than half of the 11 hours per week that their parents used to spend outside. Get this, 40% of children have never squelched through the mud. I think we're losing her now. She's lost interest. More than half have never built a sandcastle. I can't believe that. And two-thirds have never made a daisy chain. I find that quite sad. But then again, their parents probably never played on a tablet. So is it six of one, half a dozen of the other? There we go. Well, that was a good experiment. That, that was... <laughs>
I think that was a huge success it for us. It was past bedtime, in I, fairness. I think it? it is, and, and we'll be having a little bit more coming up on Making Babies Cry later on in the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, yeah. earlier, uh, Emmanuel did his...